Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we're coming to you with another Thursday episode sponsored by Gray Fox Games. Uh, they have been doing a lot of awesome stuff to help us out lately and one of the cool things they're doing is is giving us coupon codes for all of you listeners. So for the entire month of October, you can use the coupon code MHSPOOKY, all caps, uh, to get 20% off of all of their like basic general stuff, like no special order things. Um, but uh, yeah, MHSPOOKY, M-H-S-P-O-O-K-Y, uh, courtesy of Gray Fox Games. So Just in time yeah. for spooky ghosts. And I want to thank them for not doing spoopy because I hate that term. <laughs> I fucking hate spoopy. Spoopy. I'm right there with you. Um, but yeah. So um, go jump over to their website, do the coupon code. It also lets them know that we actually, you know, drive sales for them, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. To get them to keep giving us money. So I like money. And so do I. Um, anyhow, uh, this is a board gaming podcast as. Uh, we occasionally try to talk about board games uh, most of the time. Try to. Don't always succeed. Uh, so let's talk about what we've been playing recently. Uh, I'll go ahead and start on this one because it's going to be pretty short and sweet. I haven't played any physical board games. Uh, I haven't really played any digital board games that I had been. Like Megan and I still haven't gotten our next game of Terraforming, or not Terraforming Mars, of... Um, Pandemic Legacy. Uh, we, we haven't done that yet. Uh, we've got a couple more to go. Uh, Zach and I need to schedule time to finish out our you know like last two to three games uh as well um but i have been trying out the root app some more uh, i talked about it a little bit previously that i had a really awesome run as the irie where i didn't turmoil once and i was like oh yeah the ai doesn't notice shit on me well apparently the ai is smart enough to hear me make that brag and then it just decided to constantly shit on me um that die tracks. rolls went yeah die rolls went to shit which is you not it's usual for me in real games it's not usual for me in digital games my die rolls have gone to shit and like in the last game i played it was a four player game um and for some reason despite the fact that the cats were running away with the game the woodland alliance kept doing the revolts in my clearings and fucking all of my nests and all of my bird armies so that i couldn't counter the cats and then the vagabond was going around and attacking Woodland Alliance and making deals with the cats. And it's like, I feel like everyone has conspired to fuck me and help cats win. And I do not appreciate it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I actually, uh, I rage quit my last two times playing um, and have not had much desire. Uh, last night was, was the last one of those rage quits. I even vented on uh, the Slack channel a little bit, like, what the fuck, this stupid app. Um, but uh, I... I think I still like Root, but the app might be changing my mind about that. We'll see. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trying it. Um, I need to start uh, playing. You, a, like, have you tried sucking less? I, you know, I have. The problem with with that is no one ever taught me how to not suck. So I'm just kind of flailing around in the dark, hoping to find the exit from the hole of suck that I'm in. Um, sounds we'll like you're not. Sounds like you're not sucking less hard enough. That sounds about right. Um, I do want to try playing sometime uh, if I can get my schedules to coordinate with when they do one of their quicker games or if the uh, bugs that they were having with the async games is worked out with the new update that just came through today. Uh, I know that uh, Canada Jeff and Boyd have been organizing games through the Slack channel, and I'd like to jump in with them at some point uh, and see how it is using the app to play with real people because... I do really like to play with real people. I feel like async's not going to work because the thing I like about real people is kind of like the little bit of wheeling and dealing and negotiation that can occur. Um, and I feel like that's not as prevalent in async games or it doesn't feel as like pressing in an async game. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, that is what I got. So that's what I've played. Nothing else. Um, Jeff, let's move over to you. What have you been playing? Uh, I'll start with uh, one game that is called Forgotten Waters. Uh, we have <laughs> given up uh, two Kingdom Death uh, weekends just to play Forgotten Waters because it continues to be a lot of fun. Uh, we played our third scenario, 
uh, which uh, was Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive, uh, which was about the same as the others, I guess, uh, with a sort of weird optional quest that it doesn't ever point you at, but the, the little clouds on the map, you're like, well, what are those? And because nothing ever said anything about that, you sort of just can go there and get an encounter. And they, they are something. <laughs> they are indeed something. Uh, something really weird. <laughs> and uh, so we did that. Um, it was the only poor choice in using the voice narrated version <laughs> instead of reading. Uh, because uh, it's like a cult chant, but they do it in like real time. And then they do it like three times. And it takes like... 30 seconds to go through the chant. Uh, thankfully, there's one of the a la uh, podcast uh, skip ahead, like five second buttons on there. So you can actually skip ahead uh, and skip the repeating uh, nonsense. Thankfully, I, I would have been fine with us just having to suffer through that. Um, but I knew I wouldn't. I, I, f- I knew that there was no reason for me to try and fight for it. So I just <laughs> I let you guys just go past it. Yes. <laughs> Um, we, we listened to it once, you know, we got, we got the joke. Um, yep. then, uh, we ran into our first, I can only assume bug because, uh, so yeah, it was, well, and I think part of it was that the app got updated like right around that time so when it's, we were, w- and yeah. what I learned, it's not an app, it's a website. What? Well, Yes, that is correct. Yeah, it is a website that but you can download. But there is an off-life version that you can get correct. from the website that goes right under your home screen of your d- mobile device of choice. And it functions just like an app. Yes. Okay. But it doesn't automatically update. You have to go back to the website at some point if they have like an error in setup. And <laughs> it won't tell you that. So we played the entire game. We got to the well, last... It does tell you... That it it there, it's been updated, but you, you can ask Thursby. I did it multiple times, and it was like not doing anything. And then one time, it just didn't say it anymore. So I was just like, "Oh, I guess it worked." Gotcha. And I'm yeah. assuming it actually did not. <laughs> yes. Until later. <laughs> um. So we got through the second half of our scenario. I think we did pretty well in the first portion because it's like, it's like six, like threats or five or six threats. Mm-hmm. Uh, where and then the game ends, and it skips you ahead to like the last two, or the last one really. Um, and you're supposed to go to this place, and we're like, well, where the fuck is this place? And it doesn't tell you where to. It tells you where to go, but it wasn't on the map. And so we just spent the next couple rounds floundering around and going to tiles, thinking that we had to go to like a specific tile, and, and the game would tell us where to go because we had to find a certain island. Uh, and little did we know, after I downloaded the website onto my tablet and opened up the setup, there was another island you were supposed to put in a corner that wasn't on our original setup. Uh, we thought that it was a um, an island that we had to find, because you occasionally we will find special islands. Yes. Um, and so that's what we did, and then we just ran out the clock. Yep. And then went back to be like, what the fuck happened? Uh, and it was a setup picture error in the in the app uh which yep. kind of sucked mm-hmm. but there is a way to restart or there's a way to start any scenario from the second half uh that gives you some boosts and bonuses and treasures and stuff like that and we can always go back uh the next time we play and just start there because that's really where the fuck up started anyways uh and then be able to just go and do the second half of the scenario from scratch. Yeah. Uh, but it was otherwise still funny. Uh, great. So the writing is still great. Um, oh, what, there was, uh, I go, go for it. There, there I'll was the same thing. The, there was our first loss. In, oh yeah. Yes. In, the, yep. in the game. Uh, cause you can lose multiple different ways. Uh, we just ended up, uh, with like a fight and then we ran into another fight and, lost due to discontent from uh crew unhappiness uh, well and part of that was because the f- the first time that we played and the second one we realized that we could play a lot looser with discontent and so 
our discontent was already at like four and then we lost a bunch of crew and it was like oh no this is not gonna end well <laughs> no and it did not uh the crew <laughs> mutinied and shot us to death <laughs> it was very rude uh my uh pirate was uh very funny uh because he's yes, it was he's, he's not your he's not your usual pirate um it, I mean, it's definitely been i would like overall i felt our, uh, ours were mainly like eh, okay in terms of the realm of all the different pirates but yours is definitely was definitely one of if not the best i've seen so far yes uh with its very unique story uh for a pirate <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I look forward to getting just the second half of that one in, uh, and then, uh, maybe, maybe doing another one on top of that, because it should, fingers crossed, not take us too long to actually wrap it up. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling, I mean, I think we could just start from two, uh, part two, and then just type in that island and just be like, cause, cause that was the goal was to go to there. Yeah. So we could just start with going there Yes. and then dealing with it from there. Yeah. So, so there was probably only... I don't know, maybe in uh, less than an hour's worth of content yeah. left. Well, and and especially because we got through all everybody became legendary except for Thursby, I think, who was and, only like two away. Yeah, and and then we just read the stories at the end, so there's no no reason to wait along for that. Yeah. So yeah, I think we could just go along. Uh, I did. Ha- there was a real some really funny moments where all like I won't say anything other than uh, in the book we had to write. Like it, and, and it told us to write this of do something like did something weird, and boy howdy did 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 that person really do some weird stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes they did. Uh, there was a, a denim jean short incident at one point. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Stole his style, man. And the <laughs> I I will spoil this one just because it was f- fucking hilarious. Uh, I stopped at a tavern, and then I got into a game of shark darts, which is just darts with, I guess, like, shark teeth, like, darts or something like that. But I fucked up so badly that, I like, I hit the guy behind me who uh, knocked into somebody else who was, like, lighting a cigarette that went into, like, alcohol that, like, burst into flames. And then I ended up, like, destroying the entire um, tavern that I was at. And then somebody came by... And was like, what happened? And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. There are a bunch of royal sympathizers in there. And they were going to turn us in. So I burned the whole thing down. And then they're like, oh, man, you're a hero. Yeah. (laughs) And you got like a ton of infamy from it. Yeah. It was great. (laughs) Yeah. The voice acting, that was great. It was like, not going to lie. There was a ton of royal sympathizers. (laughs) And just the usually descri- when you- just the description of what happened was yeah. amazing. Because usually when you roll bad, bad stuff happens. But it was so bad that it ended up working out great. It was hilarious. Yes, yeah. Uh, and that's the best part about the game so far. Yes. Uh, and I did play something else, but I I think I'll save that for Zach because it's probably <laughs> the only other thing that he played. <laughs> I would assume. Uh, you would assume correctly. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach. Well, with that excellent transition from Jeff, what have you been playing? Super suspenseful, but we uh, we tried out. Uh, so three of us bought the new expansion for Arkham Horror. As uh, is under dark, Yep, under, under Dark Waves. Um, uh, we played one of the new scenarios, and we decided to use all new uh, investigators. So there are four new scenarios. We did one called uh, The Pale Lantern, which was like reminiscent of like the Twilight lodge the silver twilight lodge this was like the lantern club and we were dealing with the lantern club <clears throat> and i have to say our i felt like our <laughs> yar yar exactly yar <laughs> um we had some really interesting investigators the new, uh, some of the new ones that they added up that that were that had shown up in like eldritch horror and mansions of madness and etc um jeff's was silas marsh the uh, the sailor uh-huh. who who might as well be a pirate. Yes, that's um, how I played him all game. <laughs> yeah, and what's what's funny is like when you start off, you get you, you have a, you get one item that you always get, and then you get a choice between two. And one of the items that that Silas wears is just a flannel shirt, but you can <laughs> tell that he does not to be he does not like wearing that thing. No, because he like he looks super in his element in his regular portrait, which is just him fucking abs. 
you know, Abs <laughs> McGee. Um, a chest tattoo of a boat. Exactly. Um, but like him, he's wearing a flannel shirt, and you can just tell he's just like, oh god, the world is missing out on on my glory. <laughs> yes. And that's why his other ability is way better. Exactly. Um, but his his main ability. Is, so was it your um, like on your investigator card, uh-huh. or was it yeah, one of the, the one car- that okay. let me choose prey? Yeah. So once per round, he could choose an enemy and make any person their prey, meaning that like we were, it was very easy to move monsters around and yep. not have them fuck up people, which was really nice. Or move um, them out of the way to ex- somewhere completely where someone could walk through. Yes, exactly. Because um, we we always try and game that when we can, but it's it's really easy when you can just make them go where you want, more or less. Uh, and then uh, Paul's character was uh, Charles. I forget what his name, but he's like the old business rich guy. Um, but his and he's President fairly business. Weak. Yeah, President Business. Yeah, um, he you know he's fairly weak except for. Um, uh, negotiation or whatever it's influence, mm-hmm. um, hand shaky thing. Yeah, handshakes. He's really good at shaking hands, which is yes. you know not great right now. <laughs> but his one, his ability that is really cool is that he can uh, spend two dollars to just buy an ally, and then that cost is increased by one for every ally he has. So at one point we needed to start taking horror. Like people needed to take direct horror or not direct horror, but just horror. And he's like, Oh no, I have three allies on me. So I only have a total of 15 health and 17, uh, horror. Yeah. <laughs> or 15, uh, 17 salmon, stamina, stamina, or stamina, uh, sanity. That's yes, what it is. Sanity. Yeah. But, um, so those, those were like the, the notable investigators. It, it seemed like they had some pretty cool abilities. My ability was, I was Ashcan Pete, who was actually the, uh, like a promo character. Uh, I want to say it was from like one of the Arkham Knights games that they had, but uh, I like, I saw him on, um, tabletop simu- simulator. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was, it was, so it was nice for them to include him on here. Uh, but his ability is, uh, whenever I do the gather resources, because I'm I'm a drifter, I can take, uh, <laughs> I can take an um, one item from the display that's printed value of two or less. So I can t- get a lot of real cheap things for free. Except for about half the game, everything out there was cost four or more. It was <laughs> yes, everything was really expensive. annoying. We didn't get a ton of items. Like uh, Paul, no. Paul got a fuckload of allies, which was his shtick. And then, like, a shotgun. And yeah. And that was about it. I got a rabbit's foot, and that was about it. At the very end, finally, yeah. when something you could get was out there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, I, well, I also did get one curio, which helped me research instead of doing the uh, the ones that helped with warding. And then we proceeded to get screwed by uh, anomalies and just doom in general. And I was just like, God damn it! I wish I would have taken... The, either the warding things that I could have. Because I was, it was, Wes and I were the only ones that had, like, decent lore. Yeah, I, I had rid one, of. so that yeah. wasn't going to do I, much. And Wes was busy fighting shit, and I was like, oh, well, goddammit, I'm going to be the one that has to do most of this shit. And Paul was busy getting allies all game. Yeah, he did eventually start, he was able to start doing stuff, like, I guess he had an ability that let him, if he had whatever restriction... He could use his uh, his influence role instead of anything else, uh, yeah. And so that that started to to work well. I have a feel like I also want to double check to make sure he wasn't fucking something up, because um, <laughs> it might have been a once around thing, and he I feel like he was doing it multiple times or something like that. But yeah, this expansion basically added other towns that you go to, and so the board it's still the five main like pieces. But they're uh, it's like three were connected and then two are connected, um, and so they're like their own unique just sections. And they added uh, a new thing to replace, or not really replace, but in addition to streets, they are called like travel routes. And it was like the train, just roads, and then like a uh, uh, a boat, it, like a it, port. It felt like the uh, like the tickets from Eldritch Horror mm-hmm. or uh, Arkham Second Edition. It was it was similar to that system, yeah. Uh, and so you could uh, like there were there were uh, multiple on each of the different sections, and so you could use one like you could use a road to go to another road, but like either one of the roads, so you would get to choose. 
Um, same with the boats and the trains. Uh, you just had to spend one money for it. Uh, so occasionally we had to make sure that, you know, we had the money because it's not, you know, because <laughs> it's we like money. Yeah, we like money. Um, but it added an interesting thing, especially when dealing with the enemies and trying to figure out who was the uh, who was their prey. Uh, because you're like, oh, it's like, you know, there's someone like a couple spaces away, but then you realize that, oh, because of the travel routes, this person is one less and they're, you know, on the other side of the map. And so making sure to plan for that. Uh, but I thought it was a pretty good scenario. Um, we definitely were doing well and then got super fucked, but then pulled it out at the end. So we got like the the good bad ending. Like, you know, yeah, the, we were the enemy little... still spawned. The doom but we was were... out of control. The Yeah. Like, those anomalies were fucking ridiculous. And there was a monster that was adding more that we didn't take care of all camp. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. So there was, well, yeah. So there is a monster that we thought about doing in the beginning, killing in the beginning. It was like a, a pale lord or a moon lord or something like that. Uh, he hung out in the streets, uh, and he wouldn't engage you unless you, like, specifically went to attack him. But on his turn, he would add one doom to an unstable space, which by itself isn't great, but not the worst, except... A lot of these fucking cards had two unstable spaces on one card, and so it was just and it was just adding so much doom. Doom, and then because we failed like the first part, we added two more doom tokens into the mythos bag, and so we were just adding doom like crazy. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, and then we also had a they have a another new section that's uh, only on a couple of the expansion or uh, of the scenarios i think but it's basically like a named uh, side tile that you can go to this one was called like the high house i think yeah is that it, I Jeff? yeah uh, i want to say it was it's it was in arkham sect edition one of the expansions like the kingsport expansion it must be something from the books or something cuz it, it's been in multiple arkham games before Gotcha. All right. And it it usually has the, like, there's an ally, uh, like, or something that is there to help you against the the evil. Okay. Uh, Well, so how these ones works is they're there. They call them complex encounters. And really what you do with those is you get red, you know, a little, a blurb, but then you actually have to make a choice of like, oh, you hear something at the window. Like, do you like peek through or do you like announce yourself? And then depending on which one you choose, uh, then you have to resolve whatever, you know, whatever it asks. Um, but it was, you know, it was nice to get this to, to play this game again. And it was nice to get new scenarios. And I'm looking forward to trying the other ones. Um, they're varying the amount of uh, big tiles, like uh, neighborhood tiles. Uh, we saw one that only had four, but we also saw one that had seven different ones. So it's using all of them. Uh, well, it's using seven of the eight tiles that are available. So I am curious to see uh, how well these ones will work. Yeah, uh, okay. there's there's all all different sorts of sizes to try. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Big box expansion added a lot of big stuff. Shocker. It did, yeah. and oh boy, does it barely fucking fit <laughs> in the box. <laughs> yeah, it, it has it has about a quarter of an inch of uh, a quarter to yeah about a quarter or so inch of lift, but that's. Because I have the deluxe rule book, I think if I just had the the paper in there, it would be it would like be flush. So okay, uh, I have kept that big box just so whenever the next expansion comes out, I'm gonna have to move to two with that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, right on. And that's, that's and games. that's it. Cool. Um. Well, that maybe I forgot to verify before we started the show, but that maybe lets us move over to a bloody minute, Jeff. Nope. No bloody uh, minute. The round has been held up. Some guy's moving uh, cross country, so he's like moving to Virginia, uh, and uh, that seems like a mistake. <laughs> and we're just waiting on that match to happen. Uh, so no, no, no blood bowl this week. Hopefully soon. I need to. Right on. I need to smashy smashy before it's all done. Uh, so, uh, in other Blood Bowl news, though, uh, there's like in-person tournaments happening. What? Oh, I saw those. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, fuck that. It's in like uh, uh, now. Let me take you. Where do you think in Colorado, Alabama? In, oh, uh, in Colorado, this would be happening. Alamosa, it's the Springs. 
Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Pueblo also would have been an acceptable answer. Yeah. Grand Junction. Basically, anywhere that's not Denver, Boulder, or Fort Collins, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, and someone posted on the on the league thing to be like, hey, we need more players for... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, pass. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, it also occurs to me that I was about to transition into a bloody minute, even though there isn't one. We can just completely bypass banter because yes. you're just fucking up all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. I am. Um, so banter time. We can banter for a little bit about bantery things like weather and sports. The Broncos played Thursday. Apparently, um, I Did didn't. They though? I. <laughs> I mean, I mean, by the strictest legal definitions, they sure did. Uh, they did. They actually even won. They're not even last in their division. Amazingly enough. Wow. Is it the Jets? Is it because the Jets are last? No, because the Jets aren't in their division. The oh, Jets okay. are in their conference. Is it because the Chargers uh, are last? It is because the Chargers because are last, and the on like technicality of it, it's like, because yeah the the Chargers played the Chargers played another team in the division, so the Chargers are zero and one in the division, whereas the Broncos are zero and zero in the division. Ah, <laughs> ah, if gotcha. if it went to the and that's the. Uh, that's the second tiebreaker. So first tiebreaker is head-to-head, which they don't have any. So the second tiebreaker, Broncos win. Third tiebreaker would be points, point differential, and Broncos would actually lose the point differential one because the Chargers have scored two more points and had two less points scored against them. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's a dumpster fire. But long story short, I didn't even I completely forgot they were even playing until like way 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 at the end of the game. I actually pulled up Slack and was like, "Oh shit, Paul and Boyd are like mocking me in the sports channel about the Broncos game that I forgot was even on." <laughs> so <laughs> it's great not having to care about football or any sports this year. There's too many other things going on that occupy my attention. Yes. Yep. So, um. Otherwise, let's see, weather, it's been okay, alternating smoky days here and there. Yeah. It was super fucking smoky like two or three days ago. Smoke's still a problem. uh, Yeah, our patio furniture is now gray from like the occasional ash falls. Great. Because I don't have good covers for it, so I'm going to have to, at some point when all this fire shit is done, I'm going to actually wash them. I'm not going to bother washing them until it's done because they'll just get ashy and dirty again. Make sure you use soap and not just water. (laughs) You know, thanks for the uh, thanks for the tip on washing things. Well, you know why that that wasn't a, a snide remark. It's because oh. it wasn't just a snide, re- <laughs> snide remark. <laughs> it's because you needed to wash the ash off because it'll create lye and eat through your furniture. Oh, oh if you oh, use just water. Fair enough. Yeah. So that so anyone that has ash on your car, use soap, not just water, because it'll eat your paint if you just use water. Thank you for this chemistry pro tip, Jeff. Yep. I did not expect that coming from you. I know things. I just didn't expect you to know things about lie formation. Yeah. What do you do in your free time? Are you Tyler Durden? <laughs> 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 oh, fun times. Um, otherwise, I've been playing a shitload of Stellaris. Um, I'm still just trying to get to the end of a game of Stellaris. Which is um, near impossible because the AI sucks. Well, I, they haven't I mean, rebalanced. On... They haven't rebalanced the AI since they added in a whole bunch of new systems. So you need to mod in like late game AI stuff. Well, so for me, it hasn't been a problem because I just <laughs> haven't even gotten close. <laughs> I just well, I just dominate everything. Mm. Like so far to the nth degree. Like we're th- probably I think we're like eight hundred years from the end of the game, uh, and I know like the end game crisis is starting to I think build. Um, there are a bunch of little like things popping up where it's like oh i bet this is like the build up to the end game crisis and um i'm already like i have far surpassed the um uh, the like fallen empires that are all normally way way more advanced than you but are just stagnant uh i've passed all of them like half the galaxy is like named me their protectorate and it's i'm just rapidly moving towards being supreme leader of the entire fucking galaxy and uh, I'm just trying to get through it. <laughs> it's there's like nothing for me to do right now except like just crank full speed towards the uh, impending galactic crisis, and then hopefully be able to solve it on my own because everyone else is useless beneath me. Fair enough. So we'll see. 
Um, and then occasionally been playing Among Us. I haven't played much since our last episode, though. Um, scheduling hasn't worked out. Like, people haven't really been available when I've been available. Um, turns out people like to play on, like, Friday nights because, I don't know, they don't have to be at work at 5.30 on Saturday morning. Weird. Weird. Great. Uh, oh, and my work moved my schedule up now. I have to be at work at 5.30 every day instead of 6. <clears throat> so... Do you still yes. have to leave? Do you get to leave earlier, or yeah, I get I get to leave thirty minutes earlier. But trust me, that's not an exchange that I'm interested in. Like, <laughs> not an equivalent exchange, re- some would say. Yes. Yeah. If that... if we still work recorded on Sunday nights, maybe because then I'd be home like, you know, I'd be home regularly at six thirty instead of seven, so we'd be able to start at a reasonable time. But since I work Monday at five thirty, I don't really want to work. 12 hours and then come record and then go back to work at 5.30 the next morning. I already don't want to go work at 5.30 tomorrow, so. Gross. Then don't. Just be like, fuck you guys, I'm out. Unfortunately, I do still need money, and uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so I'm really keen to keep my health insurance. Speaking so of... they kind of have me by the short hairs. Yes, they do. Speaking of noping out, uh, a new guy, a new warehouse guy started today. Uh, I was helping training him. And he came from an Amazon warehouse and he was like, oh, yeah, I was applying to Avery and Epic. So it was, oh, he was like, oh, you worked at Epic. Uh, and I was like, good job at choosing Avery, guy. Uh, <laughs> I, had, I had heard a story of uh, my second boss in a year recently noping out of <laughs> his job at Epic <laughs> and just quitting, leaving, no notice, nothing, just stop showing up for work. Uh, because he said he, the guy's name who he was interviewing with was someone I was not familiar with, so that would have been a brand new warehouse manager, and the third in a year. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it seems uh, seems not great. Not, I'm pretty happy to not work there anymore. Yeah. So are a lot of people. <laughs> 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 but I'm seven a.m. now. No more nights. Uh, but nice. seven, not eight anymore. At least it's not six. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I'm dealing with that now. <laughs> Traffic's a little nicer <laughs> when I'm leaving at, you know, 6.15 in the morning. Cool. And I'm off by nice. three, you know, hours yeah, before nice. anyone else is. So it's not like I can do anything <laughs> right after work anyways. I mean, I'm off at two, so okay. I'd be happy to, like, maybe do things. Either, yeah. like, play two-player board games or video games or go grab a beer occasionally, S- you know? Speaking of video games... Uh, Zach and I picked up Star Wars Squadrons, uh, which is the new Star Wars flight sim dogfighting game. Uh, and I've played it in VR. I hooked up my VR for the first time is, since Alex came out back in March? April? Yeah. Uh, and it's very fun in VR. Uh, I, I got very lightly motion sick, but not like sick sick. Just sort of like I got hot. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, it makes you sweaty when you when you get motion sick, you get sweaty. Uh, that's one of the symptoms. Uh, I don't know why that's so funny. I don't me. know. It's just, uh, and so I, I was getting warm, but once I turned a fan on, I was fine. Uh, and I dog fighted, dog fought. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I I shot some rebels and I shot some imperials, and uh, that's been about it. Uh, I've only done two of the uh, intro missions. Uh, I didn't have time to actually... I I forget what else I was doing, but I was like, I'm going to... Oh, I was uh, catching up on the boys. And I was like, let me watch... Or let me play this for about 30 minutes, and then then I'll start doing that. Um, And the quest held up well in it, although it's... The 72 hertz for its refresh rate is is not ideal for ships that are in your peripheral <laughs> especially if they're coming into frame cuz it's just like like you definitely see them get a little bit choppy. Yeah. Um I I was playing but, at 144 and I was still still feeling it. Yeah. Uh I'm getting the quest 2 in about a week or so, next week at some point. Uh and that one will I think they already have <clears throat> either either in beta or they already have updated virtual desktop which is how I stream wirelessly to my PC uh, to go uh, 90 hertz and use the full uh, resolution. So it should be pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, I had to adjust my 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 seated portion because it, it sort of has your like a body there in the cockpit. And I was yeah. like halfway through the neck because <laughs> it's like a digital body. 
Yeah. Also, let me just say, it is so much better to fly as the Rebels than it is as the Imperials. Yeah. Uh, solely because, like, the the Rebels actually have a cockpit, so uh-huh. you can see above you and can track them. You and know, around someone you. flies. Yeah, you can actually look at them. Whereas, I mean, if you're in a Tie Fighter, there's just a circle there's in front a, of you, and a that's about it. Porthole right in front of you, and that's it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and you're sitting pretty far back. Uh, yes, you you're are. not really sitting close to that porthole. It's no wonder that they were such bad flyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't flown anything except the the regular TIE Fighter so far, because there's a bunch of challenges and stuff, so you need to get yeah. kills with the basic TIE Fighter, but I want to try. Because you have, like, you, yeah, you have, like, the, the, the all-purpose one, you have, like, the, 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 the agile one, you have the bomber one, and then, like, a support one. Yeah. Is there just four? Uh, as far as, like, I, I think so. X-Wing, Y-Wing, not... A-Wing... You wing, you wing, yeah. Which is uh, from and, the Rogue One. And then there's uh, Tie Fighter, Tie Interceptor, Tie Bomber, and then Tie Reaper. Yeah, I remember so. that was in the X Wing Minis game. That's where I f- remember first seeing it. Uh, gotcha. In canon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it seems like the 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 game in general is bringing in a lot of the uh, side story stuff. Like, uh, a lot of stuff I'm seeing in it is from, like, Rebels and, well, mainly just Rebels, because that's what added a ton of those kinds of ships. Like, those light cruisers and stuff that mm-hmm. are in there. They're like, oh, what are these ships? A lo- uh, like, a lot of those are from the cartoons and stuff. Because they're, gotcha. they're like, you can't just fight a Star Destroyer every week. You need to have some sort of other ship that they have an actual chance at fighting. <laughs> yep. Uh, but the nice thing, like, they've been doing a good job with scale. Because um, when you start off, you go um, like on one of the uh, intro missions. Like you, you basically uh, warp or um, is it warp? I don't. What is it? I hyper, light, hyper, light speed, hi- hyper drive, light speed. I can't even remember what they call it now. Um, but uh, you like you basically uh, jump into uh, in front of a giant space station, and it's like you know things that are really big, but like far away from you. You're always just sort of like hey, that looks like. Sort of two dimensional, but not really. But as you get closer, it's just like, oh shit! Now I'm actually seeing all the detail in the the three D, yeah, like actually jumping at you. So it, it's been good so far, and it's only forty bucks. Yeah. Uh, do, is did Thursby get uh, what is it? Hotas? Is that what those are called? Hotas. Yeah, Hotas. Hands on throttle and stick. Yes. I have no idea. Okay. Because I know he was thinking about getting one of those. Gotcha. And and I've heard that those work well for for this. I have like an but... old sidewinder that has like oh, the God. rumble <laughs> in it. Yeah. Um. It's it's super old. It probably still works, but uh, that's also in like Chicago. So. Right. As in as are most of your things that you have Correct. apparently. Yes. <laughs> Random thing. Oh, Jeff's like, oh, I have that, but it's in Chicago. Yep. <laughs> Is that like a girlfriend in uh, Canada, Canada, Jeff? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's that's about all I've been doing. Cool. Um, and then I got pre-orders yeah. for both new consoles. You son uh, of a bitch. You bastard. Yep. But I didn't get one for the 3080, which is what I really wanted, uh, which is still selling out instantaneously uh, whenever it uh, appears. Yeah. That's... Uh, so fucking frustrating. By the time uh, I can reasonably get a 3080, I will just have all more money saved up. So <laughs> works out for the best. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'll, sure. yeah I'll, I'll be getting a PS5 at some point. I just know uh, the deadline for that is whenever Ratchet and Clank comes out. That's when it must must be in your possession. Exactly. Yeah. Right on. Uh, well, then I think that. Um can go ahead and just wrap up banter. Uh, as you guys mentioned earlier, you've been foregoing Kingdom Death for your uh, high seas adventuring. Yeah. And, it's just nice uh, to play something different. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. Um, but yeah, so that pretty much moves us over to just some news and Kickstarters then, I think. Yes. Uh, All right. Well, let's do it. First up in news, uh, Asmodee has announced... Uh, they're doing like a whole art series with this group that has done a bunch of art before, and it looks real cool. Not the new stuff they have announced, because that's not out yet, but the old stuff that this company's already made. Yes. 
Uh, so, um, essentially this group, uh, Artovision, they do multi-dimensional art collectibles, um, aka shadow boxes mostly, um, and they are going to be pairing up with Asmodee to develop pieces inspired by Catan, Arkham Horror, Twilight Imperium, Keyforge, and Legend of the Five Rings. Um... We went and looked through some of the stuff over on Artovision's website. Like, they've got a bunch of stuff right now. Some of it, like, retro video gaming. Some of it, like, just weird retro retro shit. Like, they've got, like, a, uh, drive-in movie ice cream prints and stuff. Like, different drive-in movie prints. Uh, and then they've got, like, old-school video games. Uh, like, pixel art stuff. Like, an old Castlevania one. Kong, uh, old Kong one. Like, King Kong. Uh, modern stuff like Cuphead or um, ah, the one Dead Cells. Um, and then they even already have some board game stuff. Like their Root Shadow Box looks great. And so uh, they're going to develop more of that type of stuff for uh, for those five games in the Asmodee lineup, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, their Shadow Boxes are all about 130 bucks, so they're pricey, but they do look real, real nice. They're quite fancy art. Uh... Yeah. I would assume like the first set's gonna be like, let's do the box cover for various Asmodee games, because that's what a lot yeah. of their other board game stuff is. That's what it yeah it seems to be so far. Um, like that's what the root one is. It's just really the the box cover. Looks um, nice though. It does look real nice. Like looking through their website, it was one of those things where it's like, man, I really wish I had like a super dedicated board gaming, computer gaming, whatever kind of space to uh, to really put up some of that art. Like, uh, as much as I hate the phrase, a man cave, if you will. Yes. Um, a nerd cave. I'm more okay with that. The old nerd cave. The old nerd cave. But, yeah. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Like, I think it's funny there. Like, each property is known for their use of high-quality illustrations, but the first one on that list was Catan, and it's like, eh, really? Um, but like Arkham, <laughs> the new Twilight art is great. Um, I never really looked at much of the Keyforge art. Legend of the Five Rings, I haven't looked at a lot of the new art. Uh, the old stuff was pretty cool back when I used to try playing it a couple times with Ant at uh, some of the Magic the Gathering, uh, uh, Magic and Mimosas. That's what that was in the before time. Yes, and even well before that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Magic and Mimosas died a long, long time ago. Yes. Um, but yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of things they come up with. But moving right along to the next bit of art. Or news. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Art news. Uh, That's next, not art news at all. <laughs> next up in news, uh, there is a new title, which is relevant for the first uh, Monday in October, uh, which is a game called first monday in october also it's about the supreme court yes uh so i didn't know that the supreme court like started their term on the first monday in october or that it had been steadily moving considering one of its old terms was the first monday in december and then it was second monday in october and now it's first monday in october and i don't know maybe eventually it'll be i don't know sometime in july who knows um but uh, this new game, um, it comes from, uh, I lost it, first-time desi designer uh, Talia Rosen um, and Fort Circle Games. And it's somewhat inspired by T Twilight Struggle. Um, and uh, basically, you are uh, different, like... Uh, think tanks that are trying to influence the judge's opinion. And it go plays throughout the history of the Supreme Court from like the 17, 1800s uh, all the way to modern day, uh, featuring three distinct eras. Uh, era one goes from the founding of the court in 1789 all the way until the Civil War in 1865. Era 2 is 1866 uh, until the seminal decision of Brown v. BOE in 1954. And then Era 3 is 1955 until the present day. And so, like I said, you are these different think tanks that are trying to influence the 
overall philosophy of the Supreme Court that is represented by four tracks, the Commerce Clause track, equality and liberty, free speech, and executive power. And shifting along those tracks kind of represents the way the court has bounced back and forth between a more expansive and centralized federalist interpretation versus like, you know, states' rights and anti-federalist type stuff. Um, you know, the kind of thing you might be vaguely familiar with if you loosely paid attention to the politic side of Hamilton recently, because that all kind of started with Hamilton and Jefferson disagreeing about how the country should be ran. Um, so, um, it has a whole bunch of different things. Like there's actually individual justices, uh, and that you can sway and justices change. Um, do you have goals you, on like what, how you want the courts to look? Um, cause I'm, cause <clears throat> with, uh, like twilight struggle, I feel like there's the easy thing of if you're America, you want America to win. If you're, <laughs> if you SSR, you want USR to win. But, um, oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Philosophy goals. Okay. Yeah, so there's different goals that as you accomplish them, uh, you claim different scorecards um, by having influence on them. So you can you can spend your influence as this think tank in different areas, and then if you have the most influence on a card uh, that actually happens, like... Um, you know, swaying the court on different tracks and things, then you claim those cards. And at the end of the game, uh, whoever has the most claimed scorecards is going to win. Gotcha. And it also looks like you have these philosophy goals that you like start with three of them. And then at the end of the first era, you get rid of one. And then on the end of the second era, you get rid of another one. So yeah. you can work to different things, but obviously you got to got to hone on in towards the end of what you actually want to do. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It sounds kind of interesting. Um, I do really like kind of like push pull mechanisms, uh, like from things like Twilight Struggle and like the way the tracks work on this seems very push pull. Um, another game that I thought did push pull really well was um, the uh, the two player Nixon game. Um, Watergate. Watergate uh, had a lot of push pull on like swaying the investigation. Uh, that I thought I think that's like. Tends to be a really cool mechanic. Um, and, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm interested. Um, I don't think it's going to come out anytime soon. Um, but uh, we'll see. They plan to kickstart it sometime in 2021. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then it definitely won't be coming out anytime <laughs> soon. I Somehow I'd missed that. We'll kickstart it in 2021 and release it the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once you pledge, it immediately overnight airships. Shipping is going to be bonkers on the Kickstarter, <laughs> and they're taking a huge risk by just producing a shit ton of them. Because it's not when it's when you pledge; it's not when you actually pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah. So first Monday in October. Uh, look for it on Kickstarter sometime next year, and probably a lot more information. Like the photos in this article are a lot of stuff from like clearly prototype material. Um, so it'll be interesting to, you know, see if they're still doing development on it and how it kind of comes out and what it looks like, uh, when all the art and everything's finalized. Um, but yeah, I'm intrigued. So that's all that matters. And that's it for news. Indeed. Which moves us along to Kickstarters. Woot. Uh, in, uh, HeroQuest Watch, it is, uh, at $1.9 million. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. With, uh, 32 days left to go on that. Also, that's not Kickstarter. That's, you know, whatever. Pulse. There's crowdfunding. Do yes. we need to change this to the crowdfunding section? No, it's it's free. It's free interest. It's interest-free loan uh, with their own, with no one else taking a cut except them. That's that's what it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. No, which, it's, I mean, it's I guess, literally a pre-order of something that's not even made yet. Which I guess really good for them. 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 Anyway. Our actual Kickstarters. Kickstarters that we're going to talk about. Yes. First up is uh, The Thing, the board game. This might sound familiar because it's probably it's existed in some fashion before in more ways than one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's very well funded, 316000 of its $49,000 goal. Over 3,300 backers. Uh, less than a week to go, however, on this one, which you can get for $93. Uh, and then... It's, 
of course, additional purchases on top of that for expansions, etc. Yeah. Um, yes. So um, this is the universal approved official board game, um, which I don't know how that applied to some of the previous things, like Infection and Outpost 31. Which was also a licensed board game. Yeah. Um, but so this one is a... Uh, they describe it as a tense cinematic experience, which is a shit description for a board game. Yes. Uh, but it's a semi-cooperative kind of game for one to eight players uh, where you are basically, as in the movie, uh, as in and as in all of the other games, you're trying to suss out uh, the alien. Uh, if you're a human and if you're the alien, you're trying to stay alive and spread and escape from the station. Uh, so in that regard, it's just like every other The Thing board game that has ever existed. Um, Including Who Goes There, which is the book that this was based off of that has the best board game version so far. Yeah. Um, you, the board itself is uh, Outpost 31, which like when we first pulled this up, I was like, I think I've played this game at Gen Con <laughs> a long time ago. Turns out it's just because the board is the exact same layout as Outpost 30, uh, Thing Infection Outpost 31. Which tells me that there must be some a somewhat official layout of Outpost Thirty One in the lore um, that everybody's just continuing to use. Um, comes with a whole bunch of different things: uh, leader sheets, weather tables, uh, freezing tracks, dice, bunch of different like they were cubes and things that stretch goals have upgraded them. If you get it during the Kickstarter, into actual like tokens, like barrels and crates of food and shit like that. Bunches of cards, a uh, bunch of different character sheets, roll cards, location cards, weapons cards, just tons of different cards and tokens, uh, a few different minis. Uh, there's going to be apparently both standees and minis, um, standees for the characters, and then there are some minis and things for characters as well, but also like variations of the alien. Whether it's all it's the like aliens from the, it's all the four the different the times it you saw it took the during movie. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and essentially, uh, as I scroll way back down here, I got to figure out a better way to jump around these Kickstarters when they are huge and long. <laughs> but uh, essentially, the game plays over a bunch of different phases, eight to be specific, uh, which feels like they broke it down way too much, but whatever. Uh, first phase is weather. So the leader rolls the die, and that determines which like weather track you're going on, which uh, determines like the consumption of fuel, uh, things like that. There is a way to use the weather station to forecast the die roll. I don't know how they do that. Um, it might just fix the die roll instead of having to roll it, and then yeah, you'll so know it what just you'll gets... have next round. Yeah. So I, I don't like. I don't know. Like maybe the I I would hope they'd maybe have a cool way to do it where like the person who goes to the weather station knows what it is, uh, and then whether they tell the truth or not is like another I don't know test. But anyway. Uh, phase two is base maintenance, so you consume fuel tanks based on the weather, uh, and if there's been an SOS put out, then the rescue helicopter moves along its little track, um, and you're basically uh, trying to, like, that. the big thing there is making sure you have enough fuel to keep the generator and the boiler on. If the generator goes out, you play without lights, so you randomly choose action cards for the game until you get the generator going again. Uh, or if the boiler goes out, uh, then you start, like, you can freeze inside the base, not just outside the base. Uh, so you need to keep both of those going. Uh, in Phase 3, if there's an exposed alien, uh, then he secretly splits his strength up to different areas in the outpost, uh, and then people, the humans, can fight the different exposed alien bits. Uh, and it's kind of a bluffing game where, uh, as the alien, you're trying to, like, keep it hidden where you're going to go because... The humans will try to attack blindly, and if they attack you, they can damage you. Um, you can also use dogs that are loose throughout the station to make yourself stronger if you're the alien. Uh, during phase four, everyone uh, draws some cards, and then you give an action card to whoever the leader is, and you move your car your character to a location. Uh, this, they say, is the main part of the game, where you're like doing all your bluffing and things like that. Uh, you're calling out what action you want to do or what you say you're doing. Uh, and then you can use special powers for the rooms, removing and adding damage counters, things like that. Um, if there's two or more 
characters and or dogs in a room uh, during phase four, you do contagion checks uh, because if you're by yourself with an alien, you can become infected and then now you're an alien. Um, but teaming up makes actions more efficient. So you use less resources to do those actions. Um, and then finally, after the contagion check, uh, the leader adds a card from the deck to add some uncertainty, shuffles everything up, uh, and then reveal cards one at a time, assigning them to different players. Uh, and you can stop revealing cards whenever you want if you're the leader. Um, who you assign things to and what things you assign are another way to bluff and cause misinformation, depending on whether or not you're good or not. Then in phase five, everybody goes to the leisure room where you make accusations, uh, trade weapons and items and all kinds of things like that. Um, if you indicate other players, you raise their levels of suspicion. Uh, it doesn't really go into what the suspicion, how that works in the game. Uh, in the video, um, it's it's there's more of a chance to get tested uh, to see if you're the alien or not. Gotcha. Um, phase six, conveniently enough, is the test phase where if you have either a blood test or if you have the uh, flamethrower and wire, you can perform tests to see if somebody's infected or not. And then phase seven, you consume food, um, and there's a limited supply of food. If it runs out, you start to get hungry, and you play with fewer and fewer action cards. You also have to cook the food. So if you're low on fuel, you can't cook the food, uh, and then you have to eat more of it if it's raw than if it's cooked. Uh, and then finally, phase eight, uh, the dogs move around the base. Uh, they don't really talk about how, and the leader changes. And uh, yeah. Then you repeat those eight phases for every round of the game. Uh, sounds like it's a lot like a lot of the other thing games I've played where you're trying to, you know, if you're a human, you're trying to run around and keep things together and try and suss out who the bad guy is. Um, if you're the bad guy, you're trying to stay hidden slash get people alone and turn them and then eventually get off of get out of the out of the station. So, yeah, uh, um, it's it sounds a lot like who goes there uh, where yeah. you're. Except with more, I guess, because you have to like maintain specific rooms and supplies and stuff like that, where they were just sort of basic trackers, and then like an inside versus outside sort of system. Um, this is one of those games that has like heavy Kickstarter exclusive stretch goals, which yeah. are not great for as a fan of the thing where they put Childs as a stretch goal. Kickstarter yeah, that you can only get. He's like, if you... spoiler alert, there's only two people that survive at the end of the thing, and then it's left up in the air if they actually live or not. But, like, Keith David's character is one of them with Kurt Russell, and he's a fucking Kickstarter exclusive stretch goal. <laughs> like, that sucks. Yeah. He was, like, uh, one of the I main characters in the movie. Which, although it's, it, although they are, well, it's like his specifically is stamped uh, Kickstarter exclusive. Um and maybe those ones truly are going to be Kickstarter exclusive. It does say at the bottom uh, that all stretch goals will be added uh, to copies after the campaign. The miniature set and other stretch goals uh, will be available as separate products. Yeah, so you're so, just going to have to buy them later. Yeah. Uh, they also have an expansion for uh, The Thing, <laughs> which is uh, the, the, s the prequel remake that they made. Like in 2011, oh, yeah. that has to do the with... The thing, Norwegian Outpost. Yeah, that's where the thing was originally found in the movie, and then they go over there and figure out what happened, but then there was a bad yeah. movie. Uh, apparently, yeah, there's a whole expansion for that, but they don't really say what it is. It just says, hey, it's an expansion. Yeah. And then there's a... Just give us 35... Setting. Yeah, just give us 35 uh, euros. Yeah, it's about 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. Give us 30 bucks for this thing. Uh, expansion. Yeah. Um, the group doing this is uh, Pendragon Game Studio. They also did Last Friday. So they've done other kind of, and I Dark Overlord, apparently, amongst other things. But those are the two that stand out to me as like, oh, I actually know these ones. Yeah. Um, see, I, there's there's a full, full ass rule book. Um, it's also completely available on Tabletop Simulator. So you can just play it right now on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, it seems neat. It's pretty expensive. Um, Probably too expensive for me to drop uh, $93 on it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's kind of where I am. Um, infection at Outpost 31 seemed like it played very similar to this, and it just wasn't that exciting. 
Um, and who goes there is seems plenty fine to me for like the yeah. thing type game. Do we need another hundred dollar? Uh, Probably not. Thing game, especially one that's locking a bunch of things. Ha. <laughs> Uh, behind stretch goals <laughs> and stuff uh, that should probably just be in the base game. But hey, and... we always have Tabletop Simulator. Indeed. And it is available on Tabletop Simulator if yep. you want to try it out. Yes. So there you go. That's The Thing, The Board Game. Next up in Kickstarter, we have Agropolis. Uh, very well funded. 121000 of its $2,000 goal. Over 4,500 backers. But you got about a day <laughs> left for this one uh that you can back for 30 bucks oh yeah shit i didn't see uh how quickly this one was going um anyway this is a standalone sequel to sprawlopolis uh which is a little like pocket-sized game um <laughs> they call them wallet games wallet games yes that has been hugely hugely popular uh and so agropolis is like i said standalone expansion of that where instead of being in a city, you're now out in the countryside and uh, you're building farms, uh, essentially. So you, at the start of the game, do three scoring tiles, uh, or cards, rather, that will tell you like what you're trying to score uh, and will also set what the end game score is. So you play until somebody hits that score and then that's the end of the game. Um, they have supposedly 816 different combinations uh, of those rules and goal totals. Uh, so you got a whole lot of different ones that can, can come up. Uh, and then the game itself is really straightforward, as a lot of these wallet games are. Uh, each turn you play a card from your hand into the growing countryside trying to score points. Um, you have to communicate and plan uh, without revealing your own cards uh, because you're trying to develop like this huge, large area. Uh, there's four types of cards, vineyards, orchards, cornfields, and livestock pens. Uh, and these all, some of them have roads running through them. Um, roads, if you build them, you're going to lose a point for, at the end of the game for every road you have. So one long road is better than a bunch of short roads. Um, the livestock pens are divided into three different types, cow pens, pig pens, chicken pens, that depending on whatever the scoring is, will have different effects. Um and you just keep playing like that, drawing cards, playing them uh, until all cards have been placed. Then the game ends and you see if you have uh, met the minimum score for the game. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. It's like a little cooperative build a good big farm game. Um, I know you said that uh, the most popular pledge was $30 for this, but I just wanted to say that that's. The $30 one is like all in. So you get Sprawlopolis uh, with its expansions and Agropolis and it's the combo expansion Comboopolis. Uh, yes. So you can just get this for $10 because I was looking at it and I was like, geez, this is expensive for $30. Then I realized that that's because that one was for everything. Yes. And yeah. the previous game. Yeah. yeah. That's what I meant. So, yeah. um, yeah, and they have a bunch of different breakdowns of it. You can do like the print and play for three bucks um, with the expansion. Uh, you can do Agropolis and just the combo expansion for ten bucks. So if you already have Sprawlopolis, if you want Agropolis and the combo and Sprawlopolis, it's twenty bucks. Thirty bucks gets you everything, all of the extra expansions and everything, which there's several of. Uh, looks like five of. Yeah. Um, and then you can even go bonkers and do. 55 bucks to get a small little carry bag and two pins that go on the bag. So, you know, beyond that, you can't spend any more money on it unless you're a retailer. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sprawl Opposites is one that I've heard a lot of really good things about. It was nominated for Golden Geek Awards. Um, a lot of people have said it's really good. Um, I've never played it, um, but it sounds pretty cool. And, uh, I don't know. Sounds like a nice little game for like going to breweries. Like, you know, if you're just going to go and want to have a game available. Yeah. Even, small little even pocket size game. Is, is sitting at 5.59 on BGG, which is that's un pretty high. Unheard of for like yeah. a $10 pocket game. Yeah. <clears throat> Apparently uh best solo. Indeed. Um yeah, they got a whole bunch of things in uh the button shy little wallet game thing. They even have uh you can sign up for their board game of the month club. Um, which 
I'm not sure how much it is, but you get different micro games, promo cards, expansion content, Kickstarter discounts, things like that. And you can even go um, to their website and they have a 15% off code that you can just order their old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, a whole bunch of stuff like that. And that's all kind of like talked about here in the Kickstarter and everything. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, Agropolis and maybe Sprawlopolis if you want to uh, pledge for it. But you got to do it fast because if you didn't listen to this on Thursday, you probably are too late. So. No, you got it on Friday. Okay. You got Friday because it's you got Saturday. A brief brief yeah. hit of time. Last up but, on Kickstarter. Uh, yeah. We have Blabble. Uh, not quite funded yet. Uh, $6,600 of its $7,600 goal. 177 backers, but still over three weeks left to pledge. This one at its most popular pledge of Deluxe Edition for $35. Yeah. Uh, so Blabble uh, is a uh, some uh, a cooperative game uh, for three to nine players. It takes about 30 minutes, uh, and you play it um, in different languages. Different made-up languages. So basically, uh, the core concept of the game is you are trying to build a tower. Um, and the problem is that nobody speaks the same language. Uh, so everyone has their own little uh, dictionary that uh, gives them a weird made-up word for the different components that go into building the tower. Uh, they have similarities... Um, between the different languages. So, like, each language should, in theory, I think the way they described it, will have uh, a very similar... Their words for something will be very similar to two other languages in the game. So, in theory, you can kind of piece together, like, you say a weird word, and then two people are like, hey, that word sounds a lot like this thing. And that's how you figure out what it is. And as you play, you start to figure out everybody's individual languages and what they mean with things. Um... And so each turn, there's going to be uh, the foreman, and they choose uh, a card to add to the tower. And it will have uh, some things on it that they will then try to explain what the resources that are on it are. Then somebody makes a guess by touching central cards. Uh, if you guess correctly, you build that piece of the tower. And so it goes into the little tower. If you build your tower up to four levels, then you win. So base layer is four, then three, then two, then one. Uh, so ultimately, you got to get 10 cards built to win. Um, then, in addition to that, as if that wasn't hard enough, there are catastrophes. Uh, so different building materials are susceptible to different catastrophes and, and can cause the tower to be uh, weak and fall apart. But there's a lookout, and the lookout can see what the catastrophe is, uh, and then they basically try to describe what the catastrophe is in their weird language. Um, and everybody else has to try and figure out what catastrophe they're describing. Um, and then if they're right, it weakens the catastrophe. If they're not, the catastrophe happens, uh, which does damage and removes construction cards from the tower. And then you go to the next turn and keep building more and more and more. Um, Zach, I know you were interested in this one. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like one of those games... The, a good social game that can be a lot of fun, but also could go very badly if, like, you get somebody who wouldn't be, like, interested in this type of game. Because you are only, um, you're only speaking in your made-up language throughout the entire game. So you can't just be like, you know, you say this and, you know, somebody says the word, like, vocado, and, you know, you can't be like, oh, that's similar to my word for, you know, stuff like that, because you're only speaking that language. Uh, there's a game. Uh, there's also no. There's also no pointing or. Yes, you can't gesture. You can't like mime, like mo like walking to be like sta for stairs. Um, but it is. It seems like it could be like there are just the words for the different things, and then they have their printed a yes and no, um, for your language, and uh, you're just trying to <laughs> stumble along. I watched a little bit of um like a, a talk about it and uh, sort of a review, but they said like, you know, the first game is just going to be garbage until you understand, like until you get how it's, how it's working through it. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a, 
the one that you explained is like the full game. There is a like beginner mode where it's just like three, it's three levels instead of four and you don't have to worry about the catastrophes. Okay. Um, and then like, for yeah. Uh, and the catastrophes are interesting because you just, it's, it's not tied to your words at all. It's you have, you know, you draw four words and you just try and figure out which one you think will convey whatever the catastrophe is going to be. So yeah. it seems like I said, it seems like it could be really fun, but I could definitely see some people just getting super frustrated at it. I did forget to mention that the the winning after you build four floors, you only have 10 turns to do that. So basically you have to build a floor a turn. Otherwise, you because you're building 10 cards. Yeah. So you can't mess up, which seems mm-hmm. punishing. Yeah. <laughs> it might be like 10 rounds and not 10 turns. Yeah. Um, and they do have some... So like each of the cards that you're trying to build for the tower, they have the, like the material first and then like the architecture second. So there it's not like just two random pieces, right? There's four there's four materials and four pieces of architecture, so you have some semblance of you know, when somebody's talking that they they're saying material first, then they're saying the architecture. And yeah. So there it's good that it's not just like purely uh random. Yeah. And the uh, the dictionaries themselves, they're not like little books or anything. It's just uh, like three cards that you can just randomize. So it's not like you're going to get the same dictionary the second time you play. Yeah, there's a whole lot of variance to the dictionary mm-hmm. so that they'll always be a little bit different. I do like here that they say it's language independent. You can even play with people that don't speak your language <laughs> because everybody's saying shit that's messed up or made up. So, yeah. Some fucked up shit you're saying over there, Zach. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to look. They've got a draft rule book up, and I was trying to see. So they said 10 turns, but it looks like it would maybe be more because um, there's actually, like, turn tokens that are night and day. And at the end of each turn, you turn one from day over to night. And then once they are all night, you remove one and then flip them all again. And it seems like there might be at least seven of them. So you've got a lot of turns. I don't know. Um, they need to work on the rule book a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's only four turn tokens. So you'd flip them four times, then remove one. Three times, then remove one. No, so that's ten turns. So, yeah. You'd have to be perfect in the advanced game. In the base game, the basic game, you only need to build three hall. So you only need to get six. So you can mess up four times, which, uh, yeah, seems tough. And that's Blabble. Oh, haha. You can build towers however you want. So you could just build four, call, four cards straight up to make a really narrow tower uh, and race to four floors. But the uh, weaker the base, the more, like, it can have a catastrophe. Um, and let's see, damage calculations... Uh, remove construction. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so it just, it removes cards. And then if, um, if one is destroyed, that, like, there's nothing left in that layer, then it causes major problems. So the wider it is, then you can suffer more damage without that floor being affected. Oh, basically. gotcha. Okay. So you do have, you technically could do it in four, four turns if you, and just, Hope for the best, but <laughs> yeah, avoid all catastrophe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, um, destroy constructions one by one from left to right in each floor, taking in count only the ones that are made from the affected material. Uh, if after this any floor has more construction than the floor below it, destroy constructions from left to right until that's no longer true. Hmm. So, yeah. So you so pyramid shapes are stronger than narrow shapes. Narrow shapes, you might lose a lot of extra stuff if you lose a base piece. And if you ever lose, like, just your only base piece, then the whole tower, I guess, goes away. Yep. Which makes sense. So, I don't know. I agree with you, Zach. I think this one, it sounds like it could be a lot of fun. It also sounds like it could be a dud. It sounds like it could also be kind of like uh, the one that everybody was playing for a little while where... You, one person could see it, one person can like sign it, and the other person has to build it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, where it was just a ton of fun to watch people flail about madly, right? Um, 
so this could be one that is actually fun to watch too. Yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, that is Blabble. Feel free to go check it out. And that's it for Kickstarters. Indeed. Um, which lets us move over to listener feedback part of the show where we have Jeff's favorite thing. Emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to send us an email. Like Alex from France, titled Soon. <laughs> hey guys, happy 200th. After a nine-month break, I have almost caught up with the episodes during the last week. It was weird to hear nothing about the pandemic, then a quick, because of the coronavirus in China, as if it was a China-only problem, then, let's be honest, quite shitty multi-location recording, then, so, um, I have not played board games, even online, what about you? And then once again, happens. what I was uh, used to in the quite distant past of autumn 2019. At least we have an excuse now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, uh-huh. Go ahead. And also in no specific order, hearing about the trip in Japan was interesting and good job on managing it well enough to pay for another trip with the savings on the exp- uh, expenses uh, congrats for the engagement, and congrats on turning your dog into a water enthusiast. Um, so to address those, yes, th- uh, thank you for the congrats on both the water enthusiast dog and the engagement. Um, yes, thank you very much for those. Uh, for Japan, I wish I could say that it was that we managed it well enough. We just got lucky, and then it turns out the joke was on us because little did we know. Shortly after we got back from Japan, it became apparent that we would not get to travel again for a very fucking long time. <laughs> yes. So yeah, yeah at We're least you didn't. Like, at least you weren't planning it for like April or something like that. Yeah. Right. Um. Like it's been really stressing making because like usually when she finishes a trip, she immediately begins planning her next trip or like shortly thereafter. Uh. And at this point, like we don't even want to start planning a trip because we just have no idea when things will be in a situation where we'll feel comfortable traveling international just for fun like that, especially as the United States continues to just fail at everything resembling basic, you know, virus prevention and shit. So more like who knows, being allowed might... into another country. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> exactly. Like we keep failing at this so hard that so many other countries are just like, no Americans can't come here. Fuck off. Um, so, I mean, shit, at least here in the U.S., like, we're lucky in Colorado, uh, like, New Mexico has, like, quarantine regulations for people coming from high-risk states, which, thankfully, Colorado is not one of those, so we can go to New Mexico whenever the fuck we want. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, even inside the U.S., depending on where you live, it's getting harder and harder for you to go somewhere and not be expected to quarantine for 14 days. Yeah. Oh, God, I would love to have some kind of functional nationwide plan. Nope. But anyway, <laughs> that Alex continues. Soon I'll be able to quickly react on your mispronunciations, maybe even live if I understand when you record and stop caring about my sleep. Cheers, Alex. Well, we don't actually record uh, live anymore, so you won't yeah. be able to do that. Or we don't stream. Yeah, you know, we don't we are stream currently the alive. recordings anymore. Uh, we are currently living, just not yes. for others to see. Yeah, we don't. I'd I'd be down uh to stream the the shows still, but uh that's been exonated pretty hard by the the uh podcast vote. So um <laughs> or we could so just, that won't be happening. Or we could just stream games online. I mean I would also like to try and coordinate and plan stuff like that more. I wanted to do a Among Us stream this last week and it didn't didn't work out. Um but I I would like to try and do more of that kind of stuff just to, to get more content out there and actually be vaguely productive with all of this extra free time of doing nothing in my house. So, woot. And that's um, it for emails. Indeed. Uh, which is also it for all listener feedback. Uh, so, if you would like to get a hold of us, you can do so in multiple different ways. You can send us emails. Emails at milehighgameguys.com You can find us over on Twitter, where I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I am Jeff underscore MHGG. Uh, we have our Instagram account at MHGameGuys, our Facebook, facebook.com slash MHGameGuys. Uh, our website, milehighgameguys.com, is rapidly falling behind, uh, but still has links to things like our Slack channel, our Board Game Geek Guild, and our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash MHGameGuys. Um, 
We do also still stream uh, Mahai Dungeon Delvers over on that Twitch channel. So if you want to watch us play D&D every other week, uh, you can do that. Uh, we did skip last week because things got bonkers for half of the crew. And so we took a week off, but we will be back uh, next Tuesday uh, with another episode of uh, the Dungeon Delvers. Um, and yeah, so all those different ways to get all of us. Um, we would also like to take this time to thank our sponsors, uh, Gray Fox Games, for their continued sponsorship of the show. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, they are giving coupon codes. Uh, so if you want to get games uh, at a discount and support the show, you can go over to their website, grayfoxgames.com. Use the promo code MHSPOOKY, M-H-S-P-O-O-K-Y, to, uh, to get 20% off of uh, their non-exclusive products. Um and then additionally, they are going to be having in a little over a week uh, their new Kickstarter Campaign Trail Green Party expansion, uh, which is a uh, re-implementation of the older game Campaign Trail along with an all-new expansion, that Green Party expansion. Uh, that will be dropping on Kickstarter in a little over a week, and we will talk more and more about that as we get more and more information about it. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to checking that out. Jeff, do you have a prepared statement? Absolutely. Gray Fox Games, quality games, cleverly crafted. Also, building the future and keeping the past alive are one in the same thing. Indeed. Well, I think that pretty much brings everything to a close. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As always, I have been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm Sleepy Time Jeff. Mm, bye. 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 Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.